You're listening to United We Scan Podcast. The views and opinions expressed are not that of the United States Postal Service or the National Rural Letter Carriers Association. If you are in need of assistance pertaining to the rural craft, please contact your local steward or assigned district representative. Thank you. Hey, welcome back. We are at episode 12 this week. And we got everybody in here today. Bill, Josh, Mike, myself. And yes, we're still talking about the serious wreck that is Rex. Mike, how was your week in the first full week of this mini mail survey? Um... My week's been good um, compared to others. Uh, mine's been going real well. Josh? Um, I, my week's been pretty good also. But then again, for the first time ever, because the numbers show up on the report for peace count for my large company, uh, I could get all zeros for all 12 days and still go up because they get a minimum of 800 letters per day. Nice. And I had one day two weeks ago where they had 11,000. Holy so, shit. Well, you know, all those W-2s they mailed out that are getting sent back to them for whatever reason. Yeah, people, you don't change your addresses, your W-2 gets sent back. So if you haven't gotten your W-2 yeah. yet, you might want to check on that. My that way, or if you don't have your apartment number on there. Yes, if you don't have the sufficient address on there. Yeah, yeah. My week went all right. Um, it was fairly smooth on the wreck side of things. We all had to wait around Thursday because, well, when the two clerks that are scheduled is one that's borrowed and one that's new, and neither one of them know the scheme and how to sort flats in our office, we had to wait till the postmaster got there at 8.30 in the morning before we got any of our raw flats. <laughs> so we did a... And she had to do the letters, too. So we all uh, waited around quite a bit Thursday for that. But then I was off uh, this weekend, Friday, Saturday. It's pretty awesome. And, Bill, how did your week go? Oh, it just went wonderful. We had, were short of uh, people to count the stuff. Uh, we had carriers confused about what to count in their DPS. We have a schedule that is so screwed up. I think we have more people off than coming in. And other than that, it was wonderful. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's just amazing that the post office could arrange such a, a wonderful clusterfuck for our amusement. Oh, I know, right? You can't make this shit up. That's for goddamn sure. It was it was nice to escape the office for the weekend, though. I will say that. Oh God, yes. And uh, I I thoroughly enjoy. It was actually kind of a double event weekend for us. Um, I have been attending regularly the Motor City Tattoo Expo over the last few years, and uh, so we went. We actually we took my daughter with us this weekend this time around. And, but, uh, my boyfriend's son was wrestling in the, uh, state finals over the weekend. He actually played fifth, placed fifth for his weight and division. So. Um, in Michigan, right? Yep. That. That's for Michigan. Yep. Yep. For well, Michigan division two, 175 class. Uh, yeah, he placed fifth and, uh, I got some new ink. My boyfriend got some new ink and my daughter got her first one. That was pretty big for a first one. Yeah, yeah. She, I thought she was going to chicken out there at first when we started mine. Because she's not one that can... She has... 
she can't sit still very long and she gets bored and her anxiety runs and so she patience why she doesn't have it but she actually sat there the whole time for the whole four and a half five hours i was getting mine done and then went then got hers how long did hers take about two hours so she she did good she only had to break once for a quick potty break and that was it she's and that's why you wear the pens <laughs> okay that's why i wear the pens right right so uh so yeah so that was exciting for her and then she was really thrilled because my uh my favorite artist who's become like a good buddy now is uh from ink master season 12 is big jazz and he brought elva with him as well i got to meet her last year so we were all just kind of hanging out during the expo and jazz did all three of our tattoos and so uh, it was a good time i got to see some couple of the artists i hadn't seen in a couple of years because it wasn't there last year and it was good to uh, see the old friends and uh, make some new ones this weekend it was pretty cool that's cool yeah Definitely. And then uh, I have uh, Ink Incarceration Festival coming up in Ohio, and I got my uh, my tattoo time and deposit made uh, for that as well. So, so when you all see me at National this year, I'll have a couple newer pieces. All right. Yeah, well, Mike will get to see my, uh, my Phoenix uh, in May, so. I will. Yes, you will. And then when I see y'all again in July, or August, excuse me, August, I'll have another one. So, yeah. It was a good weekend. Like I said, it was nice to get away, get, you know, a few hours. Detroit's only about three, three and a half hour drive for us, so. I need a large chunk of disposable income, the time, and an actual artist that I trust. Good luck getting the one you want. But yeah, we, my daughter's already making plans on going annually with me as well again. So I said next time, well, though, she's got to yeah. save her money and buy her next one. Mom foot the bill for the first one. <clears throat> my kid wants one. I still have to get my wife inked. She was going to get inked and then, um, you know, got pregnant. So that put a wrench in yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. And it just hasn't, you know, the money and time hasn't been there since. I know that. When I have the money, I don't have the time. And when I have the time, I am flat-ass broke. I understand yep. that. I only got one tattoo. It says, inmate 95073. <laughs> 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 and, it, and it's a tramp stamp, so the guy behind me knows who he's doing. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's a visual I did not need. Thank you. <laughs> and I don't think anybody out there listening wanted to visualize that either. No. But I'm, no. not, I, I'm not editing it out, so it's all good. <laughs> like any of us wanted to visualize the the thong from last year. Yeah. That he yeah. keeps still bringing yeah. up. Yeah, the good old postal thong. <laughs> I'm gonna forget you one. I swear. I almost did. <laughs> okay, on that note, so uh, no, yeah. <laughs> now, now back to uh, the topics there. <laughs> <laughs> what are we thinking about this? I know, Bill, you were mentioning something about it should just be thrown out. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to shoot off an email to Bridget uh, in regards to having it thrown out. We're, we're having, you know, conflict in, in regards to what's being delivered as far as parcels are concerned. We had a discrepancy about the WSS and the WSH, which is the walk sequence uh, saturation and then the walk sequence high density. And uh, in our office, our Eastern District, the uh, Delaware PA2 District, we were informed by the district level rural carrier specialists that the WSH gets entered under the WSS entries on your scanner. 
And then the ADR of our office was uh, confronted by a carrier saying, well, question 311 in the Rex Q&A comprehensive uh, question answer survey says that uh, only the WSS. So now we had to retract that. So what happens to all those entries that we put in under the WSH? Are they counted? Or are they not counted? You know, um, it's already counted. Yeah, I mean, they, they should be already counted. But, you know, are they going to go back and, uh, and, and retract them after finding out that we've been putting them in? Uh, How are they going to know? How are they going to be able to distinguish one from the other? Uh, by the printer itself. If, if the printer, you know, depending on the code the printer put on them. No, no, no. But what Mike's asking is, how are they going to know when you entered it, it was WSS or WSH? Oh, they, they won't know. How can they determine which, it, 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 uh, okay, that, so yeah. they can't take it back. So, you know. They can just tell you yeah. going forward not to. It, so what, what, what the post office would do is say, well, since we don't know which ones, we'll just delete them all. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hold on. You can't do that. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that would be their line of thinking. That's true. Um, that's, we, we... that's probably true. But, the, but you know, that, that's kind of the what's supposed to be the beauty of this is if you make mistakes like that, then going forward, you know, within a year, that data will, will fall off. Will correct itself. Yes. Will correct itself. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, as long, as I don't long see as a reason people, to throw it out. But you know, as throw long them. as people do that, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. That they don't use WSH, and and that was a question I had asked eight, eight months ago. It, high density doesn't mean full saturation. Correct. But since a rule carrier specialist told us to enter them, we did as 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 directed. So you can't fault us for that. Did you have it um, in writing? <laughs> yeah. Well, we ha we actually we actually do. We have it. Okay. We have a, a, an email. Okay. Well, there so, you go. Then yeah, you were, we do. Um, so then you were following. Then you were following. Um, directives of a superior officer in the U.S. Postal System. Yep. Well, I wasn't well, going to go that far, but yeah. He, yeah he's, <laughs> he, he's not superior because a he's shorter and b. It took him eight months to get back from a double knee replacement. And we, we have a carrier whose 80-year-old 80, 80 mother got a double knee replacement, walked out three days later. Yeah. But, you know, that, she, was, she wasn't on the postal program. That's why she didn't take advantage of it. Right. <laughs> but the, the other problem is the, the scanning of the accountables, you know, the, 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 uh, the uh, delivery confirmations, which are showing up not delivered when you damn well know you handed it to the person. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've had a situation happen three times already, you know, in the last month. And I had a carrier Saturday with 11 defaults showing that they weren't delivered, including one he had signed in on the scanner, a, a certified letter scanned in, uh, you know, Guy signed it on the scanner, mm -hmm. entered everything, and it showed that it wasn't delivered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what's going things. wrong here? What's that? And we're supposed to trust these things. And your pay is going to be based on this trust. Mm-hmm. So, folks, you know, if, if you can't trust the scanners... Uh, case in point, I was accused of not scanning depart the route one day. Well, that's what the computer in the post office said. 20 minutes later, the supervisor came back and apologized, saying it's in the RMSS program, but it's not in the computer that they opened up to check the scans. <laughs> now, what what the hell, folks? You've had 12 years to get this shit straight. You've had an extra six months to get this straight. They waited till the last two months before to start even training people. Yeah. And they still can't get it right. Now, my concern <clears throat> is that this is going to turn around and turn into a shit show. Mm -hmm. And people are going to drop four, four and five hours. They're going to drop four and five hours on their routes. In my area alone... We, we had Amazon. Well, we're not getting Amazon anymore. 
and and people are all worried about that. And I said, yeah, well, you know, it's the ebb and flow. It's the old mindset of the post office. We're not going to take an Amazon during the, the mini mail survey because they still see it as a count, not realizing it's the six month process, not the two week process. Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, they're going to be data mining this information from this mini mail survey and saying, OK, now we're going to adjust your route. And I'm I'm going I've gone from 200 scans to barely over 100 scans in a matter of a month. Yeah, ours have dropped quite a bit too, and I know I have come across some Amazon contract deliveries and in their personal vehicles out on a couple of my routes. And uh, yeah, there's days that those two zip codes don't even get Amazon at all. Mm -hmm. Now. And you're thinking, oh, great, and I'm going to get twice as much the next day. And the next day, you get what you probably thought you would have had the day before. It's, yeah. Well, to answer the question about where the app will show up on the radar report, they don't. Because well, I know. They, 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 you know, you have to be entered into your uh, your scanner. They're individuals. that they're, They don't show up on rec, rec report, or radar report. I know. The radar well, report is, that... is different because of the fact that it's a, a conglomeration of different mailings yep. being bound and shipped to you. Advos are direct ships to you. And they don't go through um They don't, they don't go through the radar report. Well, it, the, the point is that at this point in the game, someone is asking that question. At this point in the game, we have supervisors asking questions. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the UBBM in the DPS does it count? Doesn't it count? It's I guess, a uh, raw mail count, like everything else, except for the holes or forwards you pull out or uh, you're inverted. Other than that, it's a raw mail count, raw piece count. It, you got carriers putting the inverted letters in with their raw mail count. And you explain to them, no, you just case them up and keep track of how many you got. Well, nobody told me, you've been here for 12 years and you don't know this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not a member of the union. Well, get on Facebook, get on YouTube, get on ruralinfo.net. Educate yourself. I'm not here to hold your hand. I'll help you, but, you know, you need to help yourself a little bit. Yeah. That, and if you've done, like you said, 12 years, you've been through at least one, if not five counts. Well, probably one. Because the last one was a few years ago. 2018. Was 18 then 16 before that, and yep. 14, the one before that, and then every year prior to that. You know, th th this reminds me of the blonde that kept going to church every Sunday asking God to let her, you know, win the Powerball. You know, I, I need the money. I got to do this. I get, and, and finally, after the third Sunday, she lights a candle. She goes, Lord... You know, I, I really need your help. And a voice from above says, meet me halfway and buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> right? Oh, oh, it's your paycheck. Meet me halfway and pretend you have some interest in it. Yeah. I'll, I'll go to bat for you, you know, and I'll help you and I'll, I'll educate you and everything else. But you have to put some effort into it, too. I agree. I get that in my office too. It's like I am the only one and they know that I study the shit. So it's like, you know, y'all have access to it. Even if you're not a union member, you have access to it. Oh yeah. Cause I made sure everybody in my office had all the handouts and and pamphlets and activity guides and everything else. I never asked anybody's status on that. I just had one printed out and the boss made one for everybody. So, you know, it's not like, I don't know, people just don't, don't pay attention and then they bitch because they don't know anything. Yeah, and then it's the union's fault. 
Well, I, I the brew, union's I not brew, doing anything for me. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I brew them out for the union members, but then I turned around and I charged the non-union members thirty dollars and thirty-two cents. <laughs> that a boy. Hey, you know, a guy's got to make a living, you know. All right. <laughs> Paper and ink aren't cheap. Yeah. Well. Uh, I'll, I'll say, I guess my uh, my experience this week has been has been different from what I'm hearing, what I'm reading uh, out there, um, because our DR and his his team of ADRs led the training for management. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to my whatever his title is, OIC station manager or whatever. It, it's like talking to my D it's like talking to my DR. He said the same things that came out of, out of my DR's mouth. And, uh, he may up, up to, and including said, as long as you're not asking for anything outrageous in here, we're going to let it go. We're not going to fight you over stuff. Yep. And my postmaster and, has already said she's going to err, err on the side of the rural carrier. There you go. She's, not going to want to argue and, it and fight it. So, and I've and I've seen my radar reports. I started to see the radar reports. They're starting to post them, and including the day I, I went through my my bundled flats and counted them, and they showed up, um, pretty close to what I counted. I was I was off maybe like five or something. Oh, they need. But they showed up. On, but they showed up on there. So my experience is that the information is, is getting in there and, uh, and I, I haven't had the problems with, with my scanner logging off, you know, that I'm reading about that I've heard you guys talking about. So I was starting to be cautiously optimistic, at least for my, my office and my situation, I was feeling cautiously optimistic about this. Uh, but now I'm seeing stuff from other people, you know, we, the, you know, two days in, it was, do we count? We're, we're now we're not cutting or now we're not counting Uba. It's like, yes, you are. <laughs> you're supposed to be counting that. Are you and, just and, counting and, it with all the rest? Cause you're not doing a complete I, breakdown of your markups. You're just yeah, getting the right. piece That's, count. So you include it right in yep. there and then you get paid so the, end of, the end of shift duties for taking care of it. Yeah. So, yeah. And then um, and then my my station manager said there's even another report and I'm going to ask I'm going to follow up with him again on Monday. Uh, he says there's a report that shows all of your all of the scans, all the rural activity scans you've done for the past either six or 12 months. I can't remember which time period he said. Nice. So I'm going to ask to, to see that and and. And you know it's he showed me how that they he showed me how they enter the standups in in the system mm -hmm. and it's not a thing that they got to go through every uh they it's not the, like they got to go through each individual time card entry if they do the stand up no, and they enter it and it credits to every route in that office yep. for that day automatically they don't have to go through every carrier and add it Right. Well, the problem is, is most of them are not starting it, are not timing it, I, and then they're not entering it. Josh, I, I understand that. I, Josh, I understand that. Yeah. That's not my point. My point is that it's a much easier system that they don't all they if they if they're doing it right, and I think my manager is, it shows up for every route that day when they enter it. Yes. Yeah. Um. I've, I've, I've done a check of my, my, my tub flats and those numbers are good. And I've, I've done a couple of checks on my, um, on my, on my pre-sorted bundle flats and those have come out pretty good. So I, I was starting to feel pretty good about this, but now I understand that, you know, my office is a microcosm and it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not, it's not the general thing of what I'm seeing nationally. Yeah. And so I'm, 
I was starting to get kind of depressed about it because it's like, yeah, you know, I've been touting, I've been saying that I thought the system was going to be better for us. And I've been real, uh, if not gung ho, I've been, I've been, I've been trying to, I was, I've been optimistic about this. And now I guess I'm coming back to reality that, you know, I thought that after, after so much time that they would, in, in two delays, that three delays, how many delays we've had, uh, that we would pull off the band aid and, and go at this. And there, and yes, there would be some tweaking that need to be done and some growing pains, but that essentially that this was going to work out for us. And now I'm kind of saying that it's, it needs some more, not tweaking. tweaking. It doesn't need tweaking. There, there needs to be some more, you know, Bridget Boziak, uh, Shirley Baffin need to go and, and say to the steward, no, this is the way it's supposed to be. Not, you know, if, the, if you have managers who are pushing back and saying, you're not counting this, they say, no, this is what we're supposed to be counting. And you guys need to be at the pointy end of the spear and, and fighting this. Yeah. Or in a situation where, you know, you don't have enough counters one day and they want to bring a clerk over to count and say, no. They go, what do you mean no? I said, they have to be certified. Show me their certified, you know, certification papers that they attended direct training. Well, I, 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 I can't show you mine. I said, you don't have to. You were in the same damn class I was, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but the clerk didn't go there, okay? Yep. So, no, they're not accounting. It's only counting night. I said, no. Do you understand? Plain and simple. It, yeah, this is not for discussion or argument. Or, yeah. No. Well, I'm going to be here 12 hours. I don't care. I don't get paid for all this. You know how many Sucks years I've been salary, saying that? You, you know, yeah. You know how many years I've been saying that we don't get paid for what we do? So guess what? Take a bite of my pie. Yep. Yeah, you know, I got, it was interesting in our office uh, this week. I mean, like I said, count wise has been fairly smooth, but uh, as a you know, we had no flat Saturday, and then uh, our supervisor went on vacation uh, Wednesday. She was there for half a day Wednesday, and our two hundred four B was on vacation this past week as well. So. That left um, our postmaster for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, the clerks that were scheduled were a brand new PSE and a borrowed PSE. And neither one of them knew how to do anything but basically sort parcels. So we had to wait for the postmaster to get there to do our to separate and uh, and then count our raw flats and letters and she didn't get there till 830 and we started at eight o'clock so yeah <laughs> yeah Thursday day, was a, a lot of waiting around the other day the um the one that's counting the routes most of the days mm-hmm she didn't bring my um, hot case mail over until like 1040. And it was a whole tray of raw mail. Luckily, 80% of it was for the large companies, but I still had to ripple through it to pull out all the rest of the mail. And, so I was able to yeah. just... And I couldn't count because I'm an RCA. So... Even though I did go to the training, I can't do any of the counting. So, yeah, we all had to wait around <laughs> until she got let, there. Let me, and then, yeah. Let me go back to the radar report thing here. I got I got this forwarded from uh, an individual in our union, and it says uh, I'm not going to sit here and defend it, the radar. It is what it is, and the union supports it. I do not want to explain. Uh, a li I do want to explain a little on the bundle flats. And why it might not show up the day you get the bundle. Let's suppose Cabela mails out a huge mailing on February 15th. They take them to a bulk mail center in Nebraska. And the bulk mail center enters in the amount 
of flats for the corresponding route throughout the United States, which is uploaded to radar. By the time I get Cabela's in Idaho, it's February 25th. I checked the ra radar and it isn't there. That's because it was input on radar February 15th. Remember the bundle flats are a 52 week average. So we can't even check to see if the radar report is accurate. And we've checked in our office and it's not accurate. We once got the uh, first, the first Saturday, okay? We all got about six and a half to seven feet of bundled flats. The route next to me got 92 for credit. I had 117. Okay, explain that one to me. How the hell is 17, uh, seven feet of flats equal 117 pieces? Were they you So, <laughs> you know, I will reach out and just smack that new tattoo. <laughs> oh, he's but, gonna... you know, yeah. th this is why you know you you can't verify the numbers yep. it it the system you know it does need tweaking it, it it needs some real minute fine tuning but the worst part of it is that the management team that is is doing this they're still bumbling dolts in the dark they really are There you are. I confuse everybody. I uh, confuse everybody with uh, adults. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I. Yeah, and seeing all the issues I've seen with people, I mean, I think I asked Bill one day when he called me. Have Have, it, have you guys seen uh, in uh, upswing and SPM scans since this whole thing started? Yep. I've had a couple. I mean, I've had a few more recently. Yeah, whereas, you know, I might say one or two a week, and I'm seeing three or four a day. Mm hmm Yeah. It hasn't been that much of an increase for me. Yeah. But on the same note, I'm still getting them for that large company. So, out of, let's say... 800 letters is what shows up on the um, the report. What's the likelihood of hit scanning out of 15 the one they're looking for? Mm -hmm. That doesn't even count any of the flats. But he's supposed to be anywhere first, anyway. Well, right. how many of the flats do I do first before I do the letters when they can get one to two? One to four tubs worth. Just say, I hope you got the right one. All right. Hey, and if I don't, if I don't hit the right one, that's a failure, but not on my part. There's just too many holes in this, and management has been, you know, too slow to react, too slow to train, you know, too slow to implement. Like I said, they had the extra six months from September to, to get this down, and they waited to the last two months before it started, and they actually bumped it back an extra month, remember? Yep. It was supposed to start yep. in January. And, you know, then it got bumped back into February. And, and they still couldn't get it right. Is it because of the incompetence of the post office? Is it because the post office doesn't want to see this implemented? This this is the next step to us going hourly. It really is. Oh, I, I foresee that. As much as I don't want to be. But, yeah, it's... Well, in that, and I've seen... St I've been <clears throat> hearing things about them uh, taking stuff similar to Rex and implementing it on the city side as well. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. They don't want to see it. <laughs> no, no, they don't. I don't blame them. Yeah, especially especially my office right now. The city, the city carriers, they're they're awaiting payment of two hundred thousand dollars in grievances. Jesus, can you many? 
$200,000. What does that tell you, folks? How bad the management is. Yeah. And this is why the post office goes broke, because they're paying out all these grievance settlements. Well, because you know, take, take, their goddamn yeah. managers can't follow the fucking rules. Yeah, take, take, for example, my office tomorrow. You have six subs off. You're bringing two carriers in who are not on the workday relief list. They walk, they're welcome to come in and observe the, the mini mail survey, but they should not be scheduled. So I got at least two subs that be able to file grievance. A third regular is off with a doctor's note that he submitted a month ago. It's not on the schedule. A fourth carrier who is going to Africa for a month is scheduled off Tuesday through the next you know 30 days, but he plans not to come in tomorrow. Mm, do you expect the subs to be on call? Because there's no such thing. No. Nope. Not in my office. Oh, I called them. I'm going to write them up for not coming in. Sorry, there's no on call status. How much did you pay them? Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I got one for you. So our sub, who is no longer with us, stopped in Thursday. I don't know, turn his badge or something in. And caught me on his way back out the door and asked uh, if he could, you know, talk to me on the steward end of things. And uh, was saying that, uh, you know, he'd be more willing to stay if he didn't have to work a full route two days in a row. If he could, you know, have a day break in between. And I said, that's not, so, that's not in the job description. I said, there's no limited duty on the rural side and he's like but what i said that would be something you'd have to work out with management but i don't see it possible and uh, i stopped it, it is what it is then i guess and stomped off i'm thinking if yeah, you're covering and, and, a four if you're and that was just the 42j route he ran two days and then was in so much pain with his back and everything he needed to recover and I'm thinking if that regular goes on vacation or something happens and he goes out again, you know, for a long term, you're not going to be able to pull another sub to work every other day for you. Exactly. When there is And no then you get into disparity. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, if you did, you, you'd get into a disparity of treatment situation. <laughs> exactly. And like I told him, I said, I had to run two routes Monday. I said, I work six days a week, and more times than not, lately, it's been, I may see my ox route once a week right now. Maybe twice, because I have to run it with another route. That's it. I'm in, I'm in on full routes almost every day of the week. So, yeah. Yeah. I, it, it, <laughs> look, I, I look back to, to when I started. You got three days training, yep. <laughs> and then you had to carry it around. Now you're getting, you know, two paid periods of uh, protection from going on to another route. Uh, you know, people are coming into work, and, they, and they're like, well, I can't lift this. Well, hold it. It's part of the job description, folks. Yeah. It's 40-pound bag of dog food. It's not, you know, the 70-pound limit. Yeah. No, I can't do that. What the hell did you apply for? You know, just because mom said, get out of the basement. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, you know, you're a retiree and you just want a part-time job. Well, you know, if you're an RCA, you're going to be working. There's no yeah. one day a week, one day every other week right now. Not with a short-staffed office. It's not going to happen. No, there there was a report, and I I can't remember where I saw it, that somewhere out in Greenville, Kansas, that they were reporting no problems with the radar report, no problems with the Rex mini mail survey, no problems. Just, I'm sitting there going, well, why don't you go to a real office? Yeah, you know where they have a mix of city and rural carriers, where they have you know. You know, uh, five to seven, you know, supervisors and, you know, 
shortage of carriers, shortage of clerks, and incompetent management. And why don't you then survey them and then come back and tell me there's nothing wrong with Rex. Yeah. But don't don't go to a five off you know five route office in Greenville where everybody's related to each other and they work you know with each other. They're probably crossing crafts and everything else to get the job done, which is commendable. But that's not what's happening in the rest of the real world. Tell them, Mike. <laughs> well, I well I I work in a mixed office. We in, you know when I say. You know, when I say my office has 50 routes, well, we have two offices with two zip codes. And the two offices are on opposite side of towns. So in my office, we have 25 rural routes and I believe about uh, 14 city routes in my office, in my actual office. And and I and I would have to reflect that, too. I, I'm not seeing a problem with the radar report. I'm not having problems with the scanners. I think. Uh, I think the the tub flats are being counted accurately. I'm not having problems with management. So I, I do work in a larger mixed office that's both, you know, now granted we're not rural rural like like this like this other office you're talking about. We have a couple routes that get out in the sticks a little bit, but not. Uh, and I know the other office has an, has a route that I've run before, and I said, now nah, this is about as close to a rural route as I've seen in our office. But I'm not seeing a problem with it. But then again, I'm saying that I, I you know, my office is probably uh, that unicorn office that's, uh, you know, like I say, it's not seeing any problems. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we have not heard of no problems in any of the offices in the in the uh, Delaware PA two region, I mean, you know. Then again, we have offices in our area where you know they have open routes that have been posted district wide, and they can't get filled. Yeah. So well, we had a. I posted. Excuse me, Kristen. I, I, we had a. We had a district wide posting in in Kansas, Missouri. Uh, it was in the middle of Missouri. They posted, they posted for ten PTF positions district wide. And at our booster meeting, our our DR said, "Well, that that was ten left after they put it up for bid in office. Then it went district wide, and they filled some of the positions. And then it went back to the offices, or I guess, or office, because I guess it was one office, and they filled." And then the non-probationary RCA A's who hadn't had a year in were able to bid, and they filled some more positions. And then they ended up hiring the last three off the street. Mm. So, now there's a question for you, Kristen. Yes. Even if you're a non-probationary RCA, where does it say that they can bid on those? Are they using the exemption of the most qualified person available? I think so. I think that would, would, would be what it would fall under. So what, what's going to happen? I mean, we're seeing this now. But what's going to happen when these evaluations finally come to fruitation and we have a mass amount of regular carriers that essentially take early retirement? Walk off the job. Yep. Because I mean, I've seen a I've lot seen... of talk about it. Yep, I've seen that too. Or even some who not necessarily an early retirement. They they're ready to go. You know, they can go. I should say they qualify to go, but they're just not personally ready to go yet. That you know are going to be like, yeah, nope, I'm done. I mean, what what what's going to happen? with that i mean if you don't if you already have a shortage of rcas and ptfs and regulars as it is and we end up with a massive walkout then what's going to happen well the same thing happened in our office when we got this new postmaster in and he cracked down on the uh city carriers we we had 17 city carriers just 
walk out, basically take early retirement or early out, even though they qualified, you know, for retirement. Mm -hmm. But you know, they weren't planning on retiring. This guy came in and 17 of them walked out in the first three months. Jesus. Wow. Now, now now our office averages 14 to 22 vacant city routes a day. Holy moly. Yeah. Well, and then, I mean, at Christmas, at Christmas time, people weren't getting mail for three, four days on city routes, but they were getting their parcels. Yeah, it just... What ends up happening is you won't have anyone to cover, and they'll end up having to hire regulars off the street. Which has already been starting to happen as it is out, yep. I want to yep. say, Minnesota, Dakota area. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was just um, uh, someone. I, uh, one of my friends on Facebook. I didn't realize he was also a rural carrier in Iowa, um, and I, I posted or I shared something that uh, in our district they're going to have a district wide, uh, or they're going to have district wide hiring fairs at the end of the month after after the Rex is over, and my office is listed on there as needing RCAs. And I, I shared that, and he's in, and then um, we were talking about that. And then I saw a flyer, a similar flyer for virtual job fairs for the Dakotas, Iowa, maybe Minnesota, too. I, I can't remember Montana, what I saw yeah, there. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what's going to happen because I'm, I'm with Kristen. I've seen the... I've seen the post from people saying, "If my route goes down four hours, I'm out of here. My hour, if if I'm cut, if I'm taking a big cut from this, I'm I'm gone." Yeah. You know, and I, I'll probably stay because, and then and then what we were talking about last week. Then then what happens? Well, do you know we go into contract negotiations next year, and it's like you know due to lack of staffing. And you've got people who are willing to do it. Let's just get rid of that Article 30 protection, and you know, regular carriers are just going to have to suck it up until we can, until we can fix our hiring. Yeah, and make a make a pitch that, and make a make a run at at that protection we have. Yeah, I, know I, the, I, I think national uh, convention this year is going to be really uh, interesting. <laughs> well, that's what we thought last year, and not really much happened. <laughs> not as yeah, much, that's because, no. <laughs> that's because they didn't bother telling you about the delay in the payment for your uh, raises, and as well as you know the uh, the delay in the Rex program. Yeah, they actually <laughs> left you know potentially left all the pertinent information out. Yeah, because, how convenient, huh? Well, you know, all the retirees and all them, they, you know, they didn't need to know that info anyways. Oh. Yeah, and there are more retirees there than there are actives. You know, that's my thing. I get it. You want to go visit? But don't go, you know, if you've been retired for more than five years. You should be out. Step yeah. down. I mean, I, I have the utmost respect for our retirees, and there are some out there that really do fight for what some of us are going through now. But in general, I mean, if you've been retired for more than five, ten years, it, it's time to, to step down as a delegate and let some of us have those spots that are still going through the day-to-day -day grind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, number one... If you've been retired for more than five years, you barely know what we, we have been dealing with since 2018, okay? Yeah. Number two, if you've been retired more than five years, you have no idea what we're going through with the management turnover yeah. in the post office. Yeah. Because the most qualified person we have in, in our office, I swear to God, you know, she, we, thank God we have an AED because she's going to go into DFib one day. And yeah, we have to put the AED on her, and I, you know, I'll, I'll volunteer to do that. Um, <laughs> you are first aid uh, trained, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I am qualified, but you know, uh, there's there's mitigating circumstances there. Uh -huh. But the thing, Shocker the thing of it is, is that you know, you, you can't take a clerk 
make them a 204B and 30 days later you call them a supervisor. No. You, you can't take your supervisor, like they took our rule carrier supervisor, and send her for three days, tra- four days training, excuse me, in the middle of the mail, mini mail survey. Yeah. What what kind of what kind of intelligence does this take? Yeah. You you can't have a an eight day rule for rule carrier associates in in D, the Delaware PA two district, and out in Oregon it's a ten day, and then down there in St Augustine, Florida, it's a fourteen day rule. Where do you come up with this shit, folks? And my poor two hundred four B, who's a city side PTF. When he's there on Saturdays, and I kind of pick on him. He, he's a good kid. And, uh, you know, he just looks at me. He goes, nah, he's, this is just a glorified babysitting job. Because <laughs> that's all he feels like. He's like, you know, they showed me how to run some of these reports. But after that, you, you guys know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah. It's a mess. It's a mess. That's an understatement. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Yeah, and and Mike says, well, the radar reports are showing up. Well, we can't. We we, we can't prove that because nothing corresponds with the bundled flats versus the radar report. Is, Is it three days, four days, five days behind what we're actually getting? We've gotten radar reports for four days and only got bundled flats one day. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not a genius. But, said it could be up to. That they were told it could be up to a 14 day delay. Yeah. To show up on the report. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can't prove the numbers. Oh, don't worry. It's over a 52 week period. You'll you'll get the numbers. But you can't prove the numbers for the mini mail survey. That's what we're talking about. Yep. When, when the carrier next to me is it gets 79 on his report and he counted 405, something's <laughs> off just a little bit. But, but the bundled flats aren't being, for the purposes of the mail survey, the bundled flats aren't counted. I mean, yes, they show up on the radar report or supposed to show up on the radar report but it's not what's being counted for purposes of the mail survey then then why are they bothering to give us the radar reports why are they bothering counting them because they have to because the bundled flats have to be they have to show those numbers when they work them into your into the other 94% 94% of your evaluation. Right. I mean, you know, that's that's where that figures in. But for purposes of the mail survey, and, and that's kind of where I, I'm kind of getting tired of this fight, is that the radar report, does, if it lags by a day or two, I, I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. Or even, even three or four days, I'm not too concerned about it because those numbers are going to be averaged out over 52 weeks. What I'm concerned but, about is 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 this last little bit, the the little bit that we're supposed to count, and that's and that's why I had the hopes of Rex is that this will um, is that they're going to go away from all all this individual counting things, and then fighting over you know. Well, I pulled this out of your out of your tub, but it's actually a letter. Here's the little blue ruler, and all that crap's going away. You know or, that this what that what we're doing what we're doing is just the last little bit that they couldn't find a way to automate. That they right. couldn't find a way to automate the count on what the clerks sort and pars labels, and 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 and, and where do we where do we figure in the walking distances within your office? You know, well, the radar and, report. And, and, and just keep in mind with the radar report and or end of run reports, this Friday when they stop counting, they're not supposed to stop posting that report. They're supposed to post that report every day from now on. So you can mm-hmm. see your numbers. And, and, and Mike, you're correct. You know, in, in regards to the actual mini mail survey, 
the radar report has no real bearing on it, okay? My problem is you can't justify the numbers on the radar report with what you're getting. Okay. It doesn't I, matter whether it's two days, three days, four days, five days, two weeks. There's no way for us to, to justify those numbers. I'm trying to put it in the perspective of it's like reconciling your checkbook. Like I started a week or two I ago. You, I don't know how you do a checkbook, but I don't do it every two weeks. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to say I started writing down what my, you know, I've been counting my bundle, you know, what I'm getting in bundles and just writing that total down. Right. And then once I actually start seeing a radar report, because they still haven't printed one in my office yet. Um, so I'll be, I should be able to go back and cross reference and say, okay, these, on this day, these numbers from that date matched up and be able to start checking, you know, marking off. And at some point it should, I should be able to reconcile up until a certain point all of these numbers from the last few weeks. If I'm able to actually see those numbers. There's the key word, should, should be able to. That's why there's that 19% thrown in there. Because there's a margin of error. Should and can are two different words. Yes. I, I agree with you, Bill. Yeah. I can tell you what's in my checkbook. I, I can't tell you what's in my radar report. And I can't tell you how many flats I've, I've received that correlate with the radar report on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. You see, I, I can't either because I haven't seen those numbers yet. Yeah. Once I'm able to actually get those and see those numbers, hopefully I will be able to. Hopefully, huh? Could have, would have, should have. Exactly. No. So, so Bill, let me throw this back at you. The, 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 well, actually, let me put it to you this way: If you get a response from 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 Bridget, I'd really like to hear what that is. Oh, I'll let y'all know. Okay, because I I have a feeling that uh, uh, they're they're. As the analogy I said is, I really think they ripped the Band-Aid off on this, and they're just going to go, they're going to go ahead with it, and you know, well, it doesn't matter. You tore the scab off too. Well, yeah, you know. Well, and like R R Ronnie said, well, don't worry. If there's adjustments to be made, we can do that. No, 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 no. This is supposed to be set in stone, Ronnie. This is why we had three different, you know professors of engineering and time study efficiency, you know, corroborate in, in this situation so that it could be set in stone that everybody agreed to. You, you can't go back and change it now. You already had your arbitrators deal with it. And like uh, it was stated on the uh, steward Q&A um, prior to the Rex, I do believe Ronnie got on there and said that uh, Dr. Miracle will be at National Convention this year. I wonder how well that'll go. Well, yeah. it depends. <laughs> well, it depends because our DR said when he was he was at National Headquarters doing, and I don't remember why he said he was there, but he had a chance to talk to Dr. Miracle, and he said when he talks about his numbers and his charts and everything, he is – He's like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's in his he's in his element. So we'll see. Yeah, the last last time I saw him was at uh, Grand Rapids, and I ran into him, and and we were talking, and he goes, "Oh my God, somebody else appreciates numbers as much as I do." I said, <laughs> 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 I looked at him, I said, uh, 
Okay. I, I think it's a different kind of. I think we're interested in different sets of numbers, though. What thirty six and twenty six? I know. No, I wasn't going there. I was. Oh. I was thinking more. Of, he, he's he's thinking about his efficiency numbers and his coefficients and all of that, and I'm worried about what's going to show up on light blue in my e e payroll file next mm. uh, next Monday. Yeah, I don't think there's other numbers. I can't even, you know, <laughs> but the thing is, is you can't even access that without being on. Uh, you no, know, I can get it. You can get into payroll. payroll you yes. can get into yeah. it's it's postal e ease and EOPF. Yeah. 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 Why so is postal that? ease you can get into again now? You just can't get into EOPF. Um, they actually what? changed it on the postal ease again. After they had it open oh. a couple of days, and now it's you have to be back on a office computer in order to change your allotments, yeah. which I have to go in and do this week. Okay. But yeah, I didn't yeah, realize they that they back them. Yep, yeah, they did. Yeah, it's an EOPF has been down forever now. So yeah, well. And that's kind of weird because now that they've gone to this two-factor, uh, two-factor authentication, I would figure that they, it should be back up. So I'm wondering why it's been. I mean, I could see it take, taking it down like they did for everything else, but you know, now that um, you have to have, you know, like I said, the two-factor authentication, that should be. I don't see why we can't get back in. I don't know. I agree with you on that. Is and to me, the two, the two, software? well, I, <laughs> you know, the two factor authentication to me is not a big deal. I know a lot of people are, are railing about it on, on social media, but I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, either because yeah, it's, it's actually, I, I think it's actually a good it's idea. Easy, yeah. I think it's just, a, I think it's actually a good idea to be too, uh, captive, to, to to double verify that the right person is trying to access your information, that you well, are the person who is accessed. Mike, why do I, I I run into this every time? Because when I do the, the the first step, and and it says you're an asshole, and then when I do it the second time, it says you're still an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just because you are an asshole. That's, oh, that's just, okay. <laughs> it's just an acknowledgement. You know, it's it's in your case, it's just an affirmation. You know, yes, thank it's, you, thank you. you know, <laughs> it, it's more it's more about it, it's more about uh, uh, working on your self esteem than uh, than than anything else. I have great self esteem. It's I think I'm the best go. asshole I can be. There you go. <laughs> if you're gonna be be good at something, be excellent. You know. But but it is good, you know, for protection because of, of all the hackers and, and everything else, you know, protect yourself, folks. Yep. Wear a condom. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the doctor told my father after I was born. <laughs> oh, I've been hanging out with tattoo artists all weekend. You never know what's going to slip out of my mouth right now. <laughs> I'm not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, yeah, this, now that I, yeah, okay. This is a PG-17 show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has the explicit rating on it, so it's it's okay. Yep, yep, it does. I, I made sure, because I know sometimes people like to call Bill a fucking asshole, and... Uh... <laughs> Mm. Mm. Oh wait, Bill calls himself that. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to. No, no. He he. We should keep start keeping score of how many times a night he calls himself an asshole. <laughs> or when we're in, we're in Costco and somebody hollers asshole, and I go yeah, <laughs> and they, yeah, and they, and they look at you. You know, it's like what? What do you want? <laughs> you ring. <laughs> You call or answer. I mean, come on, folks. Right? So, Rex is a wreck. 
Yeah, we've known that. You know, it's uh, just unfortunately, keeps Mike's proving Mike, itself Mike, over and over again. Yeah, Mike, Mike's the unicorn in the group, but you know, for the rest of us, you know. Shh. I uh, yeah, so well, so and, and you always you always throw the outlier out, Mike. Yeah, I know. And and Thursday, since we all had to sit around and wait for our flats, anyways, I got the uh, ox route all set up when she got those counted, and because you know I'm still sitting around waiting on the raw mail, so I might as well throw up the waiting on the letters. So I might as well get the flats. I had that whole route ready to go. Literally everything marked. I had instructions on how to go to a house that wasn't by the box on the parcel marker. Everything. Literally, all he had to do when he walked in the door was take it out to the truck, load it, and go to the route. And it still took him almost three hours on the street. And there was only two dismounts. Well, that's probably the seven hours it took him. Last time, uh, I don't think he's gotten seven. It's about it's usually about five, four and a half, five. Either either way. So yeah, it's an improvement. <laughs> that was just on the street. Oh yeah, my case is all jacked up. I got you know case labels, people. Street name has its own symbol. It's right there. That route is literally three rows. That's it. There's three rows to that whole route. Maybe all right, two and three quarters rows. But anyways, I walk in and there's huge bright ass sticky notes with the street name written stuck underneath where it goes on the case. Yeah. And there's only one, two, three, four, five, six roads total for that row. Oh, shit. I moved my mouse and Josh and his cat oh, showed no. up again. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> there's only like six or seven roads for that entire row. And 99 What are you going to do? Is, it, yeah, exactly. You know. it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten to the point where I said, you want me to go ahead and get this case up and ready to go? She's like, yeah, yeah, I'll give you something to do. I said, all right. So then maybe it won't take him six hours out there again. And she, she laughed. <laughs> she, the, even the postmaster is at the point of just, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I don't know, folks. I don't know where the post office is going. I I, I don't know. I, I feel for people who, who are gonna be you know try to make careers out of the post office because, frankly, I, you know, to me it's it's dismal. Um, not only from their policies but from their management. Um, yeah, and I'm going regular within the next uh, seven eight months. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. I, I'm driving by three or four mailboxes that don't get any mail, you know, a day. And, you know, you're not, you know, that's, that's showing up on Rex too, you know, mm -hmm. that you're passing those mailboxes. You're not making the stops. I, I had to carry the other day, you know, it says, you know, why are you coming back so late? They came back and I had cased up uh, a box holder and two high densities and what the, uh, Two, two oversized postcard, you know, box holders. And they, they came back, and I, I was there for about an hour and a half. And I said, what took you so long? And they said, well, you know, I got to stop at every box. I said, you have mail for every box? No, but I'm going to stop at every box. Do you know it shows up that you're not getting mail for that box? No. I said, okay, now you know. It actually shows because they're using their D the DPS and, and, you know, they can't tell the box holders and stuff like that, but they know on the DPS if you're not getting anything. And, you know, they can't tell if you're picking out going mail up, though, either. Right. From a box so. that doesn't have mail. So, you know, and I, I've seen people, I actually kind of got into a little bit of a Facebook argument a while back ago, 
you know, somebody that wants to see what their volume is on a report. Can I find a report that has my volume for the day? And I'm like, you're not going to have a report that lets you know how many mailboxes you did or didn't stop at. Right. <laughs> you, you know, it's just like, well, we need that information. We should have that information available. <sighs> well, in, in the same way, like, you know, the, the, the Rex program says, you know, they drop off bundled newspapers or something at the back of your dock that's not, you know, included in the programs, too. Yep. Yep, we, we've, so. got, we've got two newspapers that get dropped off at the office just south of us because the printer's in that town. And then they just, you know, when the truck stops and drops off their mail for the day, they pick them up and drop them off to us at the next stop. And then we also got another local paper from a town hour north of us that drops it off at the office just north of us. So when she gets there, she picks those few things up daily. And then when she's coming back down, making her rounds to pick up empty equipment, she drops those off for us. And, and then you have a supervisor say, oh, no, those don't get counted. Oh, no, they're counting them. And I will Excuse say, me? oh, yeah, they're <laughs> counting them. No, but I'm saying, I, I say yeah. to the supervisor, excuse me, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. I, I, I just, you know, the, the, the lack of knowledge, the, the, the misinformation, the disinformation, I mean, it's overwhelming. I mean, like I said, we we had a roll carrier specialist telling us to, to enter the WSH, WSH as, you know, a walk sequence saturation. And, you know, you find out on question 311, no, it's not. Yeah. But this guy is a specialist. But then he's the same guy that has one carrier going by us the same mailbox three times. He, he, he has uh, 104 houses on the carriage uh, development, carriage home development. Where you pass by it, drive the whole route, come back and hit it, and then drive another three and a half miles back to hit two other streets that are at, you know not even on the route. Yeah. And yet three other three other routes go past those houses. So you know that that goes to speak volumes about the specialists they have in the post office. Yeah. Which is kind of like similar to what Mike was talking about and wanting to square up the routes in their office. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we've got rural carrier associates who uh, and and who and some have converted to regular recently that could take the routes and line them up better than this guy could. Oh yeah. Oh, I bet so. But, but because he has the years and knowledge and works out a district, he has the ear of the poom and the district manager saying this is the way it should be. Well, that was like yeah, you know, and I get that, and I remember when. It, in my old office when Amazon came in um, for Sundays and then the dynamic delivery, well, the clerks didn't know what routes butted up to what. So when they put their first initially put the routes together, we were crisscrossing across town quite a bit. And one of them actually asked me how, you know, which ones touch to what and what areas so we can make it easier for you guys. And I did, I put them right together for, her. I told her, you know, this section ha should have these three routes and this one should have these three routes. And after that, it flowed much nicer. But yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a matter of a lot of us, you know, especially the longer term RCAs that know which routes butt up to what. And we know where we can veer off to do a, a, a bump off of another route and then come back to the one we're at because we're right there. Well, here's a unique concept. When you're doing routes, why don't you consult the people who do the routes? Yeah. Exactly. I, I know that I, I I know that's out of the box thinking, but well, there you go making sense again, Bill. I know, I know, I, you know. Well, the sign says input from the carriers. The sign says common sense and common courtesy stop at these doors. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean that's like when they were chopping routes up in my old office, and I was hearing about how they took the portion off this one route on the north uh, east end of town. And they put it on to another route that primarily does the southwest end of town. I'm like, well, what the hell? Now you got to go up this way and then cross town and go back the other way? What the hell? Meanwhile, you've got three other routes in between. Yep. So, like, yeah. Like I said, I, you know, it, we, we've got this one route that's, 60 hours at least on on in our office okay 
Um, it, I mean, it was already a K route when they added the 104 carriage homes on there. To get to the first start, start stop on the line of travel, you have to go past the 104 carriage homes. Hmm. Then you do the whole route. And then when you're done this one section, you have to drive a mile and a half to get to the carriage homes that you already passed once. Then you drive three and a half miles from the carriage homes to go over and hit three streets, which have three carriers going by them. Yeah. Now, yeah. what sense does it make to go right past 104 homes and not make those deliveries, get the weight out of the vehicle, drop your fuel consumption, your wear and tear, give those other three streets to the other three carriers that can handle them. Well, actually, one carrier would handle two of them, and, and the second carrier can handle, there's four boxes. That's even funnier. After you get done <coughs> two streets, then after driving three and a half miles to get the two streets, then you have to drive another mile and a half to do four boxes. Are you fucking kidding me you yeah. can't be that stupid sure you can you just don't ask the people running the routes and, yes and, and they prove you wrong every time it, it would just when you think they can't get their iq lower <laughs> they prove you wrong yeah how about we work together folks how about that? How about you stop using your title as your authority to say or do whatever you please? How about if you cooperate with us? Yeah. I, I know. I know. I'm sorry, Mike. No. <laughs> I went too far. No. God, wouldn't it be nice, you know, if they did? It would be. Yeah. You know, the the company could make money, you know. We we could we could sort out the, the riffraff. I mean, you know, we could make it more efficient, more profitable. People would be happier. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something. Years ago, we came to work and we look forward to coming to work. We had a good time on the floor talking to each other and everything. And we got, oh, shit, five times as much mail oh, yeah. out the door and under evaluation. And we every every Saturday, we had snack Saturdays and we had rotating people bringing different dishes in on Saturdays. Different people bringing in, you know, drinks, you know, different refreshments. My office, we, my old we, office. We, and we bring what, a crown what? on the board once once a month on a Friday, my old office once a month on a Friday or Saturday morning, we'd all get to breakfast, go to breakfast before we had to report and just hang out and have a good time and then go to the and then go to the office. You know, yeah. it. Yeah, we used to go out drinking with each other. Oh, yeah. And now it's, now it's such a divisive atmosphere in there that, you know. There's only three people in my office that have ever been to my house. Two of them are cops. Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one was the ATF. I'm sorry. Forget uh, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, it's the, it, it has been such a divide in in all offices, with especially with management. You know, when you see a change in management, you see a divide even more. And it's just, it sucks. I mean, just the changes that I've seen in the eight years that I've been around. I mean, I said, you know, it, it, we used to have, I, I, I know you're not going to believe this, but th this is true, okay? Every year at Christmas time, we would play the Charlie Brown song. Uh, is, is the one with the um, uh, what's his name, Pigpen? Yeah. And and Sherman doing the dancing. <laughs> yeah. And 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 then w when it would get to a certain point, me and Mark Marciano, you, we would break out dancing on the floor to the point where I would lay down on the floor doing the spin and kicks and everything when the music tempo picked up, and then get back <laughs> up and it's like, 
and everybody would howl and have a great time. Now it's gotta get to Marshall's, gotta get there. It's like you know. Oh yeah, we can I still mean... take we we can still take three minutes out of our day to 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 make everybody smile. You know. Oh yeah, we you know we have the radio going and everybody's in a good mood and we're just you know we'd be singing to a song or dancing as we're going to you know get their next parcel out or high five in or hip bumping or elbow bumping you know and just and having a good time and then as soon as management walks in and has to go turn the radio down because i need to concentrate okay <laughs> you know how, how like dare we <laughs> be in a good mood and it, yeah and have yeah. fun at work I, I had a supervisor tell me, you know, to stop talking and put my face in the case. And I turned around and I said, I'm ambidextrous. I can talk in case at the same time. Right. <laughs> That's the same supervisor that jumped on our case one uh, one Christmas time. And I, I stepped out of my case and I yelled all the way down the floor. You know, you're the only person I know can suck the spirit right out of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'll, I'll tell you what, the ooze and the oz, even the city carriers, get a bill. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, oh. my tattoo artist buddy keeps saying, he goes, you know, that would be a good, uh, he goes, I need to write a book or, or, or make a movie about the burned out postal worker. He goes, I'm sure I got something there. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, he's all like, I haven't seen him in a year. And he's all like, so how's it going? I said, yeah, you know, I still work too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's. We had we had a carrier. He was a, uh, a postal baby right out of high school, joined the post office, was on uh, civil service. So, you know, he, he had uh, 38 years in. 38 years from 18 to 38. You know, you know, he wasn't even 58 yet. And the parcels started coming. And it was, it was hellacious Christmas. Mm -hmm. And the week before Christmas, he just, he turns around, he comes in, he saw two hampers sitting there. He said, I retire and walked out. Two hampers, shit. That's a light day anymore. Uh, yeah. That that's when we were still getting mail too. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember know. those days. Yeah, but you know, he he just said, "I quit. Yeah, I retire," and walked out. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, it, what? <laughs> what's gonna ha like I said? What's gonna happen when Rex goes in? We get these evaluations, and some of these routes lose quite a bit because maybe they did have Amazon in at the last mail count. And the mm -hmm. mail volume was higher than it was, you know, five years ago. Uh, or five years ago, it was higher than it is now. And, you know, like, you know, Bill and I have talked, you know, our parcel volume this last, what, month, month and a half has just dwindled right down. Yeah. Or or what about the people who've had special counts, you know, in the last couple of years? Yeah. And, you know, they're going to get hit right in the crotch. Yeah. And they're gonna <laughs> say, I, "I'm a, I'm an H route." I mean, I've, I've got a guy who's a J route, jumped up to a K route because of the FSS withdrawal, and he still gets done in five hours a day. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. By the time he gets done sucking his breath in, his teeth are gonna be out of his ass. And those because, that yeah. think that they yeah. help their route out by padding their route with. You know, having boxes that are inactive and having them marked active. If you're not delivering to those suckers, that you, it's going to catch up with you. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. padding your route is not yep. going to be as easy as it used to be. No. No, not at all. No. And you know, it, this is this is part of the, you know these efficiency engineers. They they they've been working years and years figuring out all the little tricks that you know rural carriers use. Yep. And they're they've you know they're slowly eliminating them. They haven't gotten rid of all of them yet, but they're pretty damn close. Well, it's like we you know doing this last round of mapping, and I we had a route that she came back and told me you know it had cleared the first time we did it, and she come back and told me it was given you know was coming up red again, 
And so I went in and looked at it, and sure enough, there's a box that should not be active that was active. And the reason it's throwing a red is because it's a new build. All that's there is the stone foundation, or the brick foundation. There's nothing else there yet. Why she already had it added in and active, I don't know. But there is literally nothing there but a stone block foundation. I'll do you one better. The carriage homes I told you about, uh -huh. the builder put in, put in one extra CBU that he doesn't need. Uh -huh. The carrier has it on their system. But there's nothing going in there. There's no houses for it, okay? I mean, mm -hmm. development's done. Yeah. And, and, the, and the carrier's wondering why this thing keeps coming up like that. It's like, you know, <laughs> it doesn't exist. And they're yeah. like, well, it's not, it's not my fault. I still open it every day. Okay. All right. I, I quit. <laughs> well, I had one for my for my ox route, too, that came back. And she asked me, so I ran in real quick in the office um, and looked at it. And I went, oh, and I, I just went and clicked on it, moved it inactive. I said, I said uh, the only reason is because that address was initially put... For some reason, it was the very first address in the edit book, even though it should be in the middle of the route. And so we had moved that. And then for some reason, they got marked active. I said, no, it doesn't even have a box yet. I said, they just built a house on that property, and it's been up for sale forever, but there's no actual physical box. I said, that's an inactive one, and it should be that way in the book. But, yeah, it just... <sighs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Like I said, those that are padding routes so it'll eventually come back and get you mm -hmm. well back to that one where you said they have a cbu that's not in use at all does all it right. have an outgoing mail slot they have what an outgoing mail slot yep and two parcel lockers well he's not going to use the parcel lockers because it's, there's no one there getting mail but with the outgoing mail slot that's justification enough to have to open the door to verify that no one put outgoing mail in there. Boy, you, 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 would, you would stretch a boogie all the way down to your kneecaps, wouldn't you? If it gives I me mean, an extra, you, know, you have three other CBUs right week. there. You have three other CBUs there for the active houses. The third one is not used completely because there's no more houses. So why would anybody go to the fourth one if there there's no mail going into it? Nobody has an address in that one. You would be surprised. Got to yeah. keep it locked up. No, I wouldn't. Uh, well, then you got to check the out the empty parcel lock. Well, I, I get Josh's point too. Um, you you got to you got to check that outgoing mail slot unless you block it off. Because you will have people who will put mail in it. Not necessarily people who, not necessarily people who live there, but you might see somebody come in and say, "Oh, I got something to drop off." Oh, look, there's there's uh, an outgoing mail slot, and then you know that letter sits for a couple of months because <laughs> you didn't, because uh, um, you didn't check it, but. But I would block it off. I, I'm with. Yeah. I'm kind of with you, Bill. I, I I would just I'd block it off so that not just a sign saying don't put mail in here. I would actually physically block it off so that they can't put mail in. It. Oh, it was well, me. I, I, I had to I, do I that. Just the door off. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're not going to use the unit ever, ever. You know, but. Hey, it, what do I know? It, it, it's like when they put some new CBUs in, in, in my development and they're replacing them and the guy had the one up and he's, he's he, you know, almost ready to direct the other one. And I said to him, I said, you have a problem here. He said, what's that? And I said, well, this is a 12 unit CBU. And he goes, yeah. And I said, you replaced the 16 unit one. Where's the other four boxes going? Hmm. <laughs> I'm just doing what I'm told. Okay, you keep doing that. <laughs> you know, there's eight houses here that aren't going to get you know mail because you're putting up the wrong units. Yeah. 
fortunately, they hadn't taken the old ones down yet. So. <laughs> All right. On that note, guys, we've been going for about an hour and a half. We're ready to wind it down. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. My phone's. The last uh, five days of this mini mail survey are upon us. Yeah, Josh, your final uh, words of uh, for the night. Wisdom. I wasn't quite going to go there, um, but yeah. Oh, well, like you said, this is the last five days, the final stretch. At this point, don't get yourself overwhelmed. If you do, take a step back, take a breath, step back in. Um. I um, wish everyone good luck with the end result. Um, we'll see you next week. Mike. Folks, do the thing. If you have been to the training through Zoom or through however you did it in your in your office, your district, whatever, do the things they told you to do. Um, count everything don't ask for anything outrageous if you're not asking for something outrageous they should be willing to give it to you again Bill I know it's that word should be but that's how I'm that's how I'm approaching it um, again it's I like I said I was a little dissolute I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm in this bad place right now because I, I thought I thought this was actually going to work out for us and um, it's looking like the post office is proving me wrong. So um, just do the things you're supposed to do and you know we'll, we'll see where we'll see what happens when they when they get the final numbers. Yep. And don't forget to set your cocks ahead next weekend. Oh yeah, is that already? Yeah yeah, yeah it is. It's coming. I knew it was and, coming up, but I just didn't know when. I have my uh, state booster next weekend, but I will be back in time for uh, next week's episode. So, yeah, I may, maybe it'll be interesting to see what type of things I hear um, as there as we wound down the uh, mini mail survey for the week prior. So, I'm kind of, I'm not, yeah, kind of looking forward to it in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And Bill, finish us off tonight. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't know what to say. The, the mini mail survey is halfway over. Um, you should be doing everything you can to, to possibly be inclusive of everything you're entitled to, everything that should be counted, all your distances. But the pragmatism in my in my being is that you know we're, we're pretty much you know on the cusp of having this fail uh, miserably um so just do do what you do every day you know um try to you know protect yourself and your route and your your paycheck uh, other than that you know when you go out be safe watch the kids watch the dogs watch the traffic get your ass home you're the most important delivery of the day um, we care about you and, and, you know, your family cares about you. So, you know, make sure you, you make that last delivery every day. Okay. And on that note, guys, we will, uh, we'll be back next weekend. Have a good week and may you survive this catastrophe of what we call Rex and have a good night. Oh.